welcome to the uh, second review of the week for Fragments of Silicon. Uh, up, up now uh, is a game called Giga Chess. Uh, it's called that because it's made by a company called Gigatross Games, and it involves chess. Now, it's worth noting that this isn't an, uh, like a straightforward chess game uh, w with your you know, chess rules and all that stuff. This is a very strange variant on chess. Um, it's a... We're... we're we're not like um, they call it a uh, combination of tower defense and chess. Um, hero defense would be more accurate. Yeah, and um, uh, I that, that's that's what that's what I'd call it. I don't know. Yeah. If there's a rule about using that name or anything, but yeah. Well, it's like the I. Well, they call it tower defense because you're dealing with waves upon waves of enemies. And, you know, you, you've got to stop them from, um, in this case, getting to your uh, side of the board. Like, yeah. uh, but, he, you know, here's where it goes more into hero defense than tower defense. Um, you don't have be towers. You yeah. have... You have the enemies are pawns. You have all of the pieces that are not pawns. Specifically, mostly... Uh, knights, bishops, and rooks. Uh, you right. get a there's a power up that can turn you into a queen, and uh, there are curses kind of that can also be situationally useful that turn you into a king. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the big difference. You are actively attacking the enemy forces instead of you know passively waiting them uh, for them to you know go by your defenses and hopefully die now, um, now you it's like you do see some tower defense games um, where this is mixed like not only do you have the towers but you also have like your individual avatar who can attack and you know th th this is akin to those uh, kind of games than you know traditional tower defense. Uh -huh. But it's worth, you know, and yeah, it's worth noting, even though it's not traditional chess, it is keeping in with the rules of chess. At least, you know, the rules governing the chess pieces. Now, um, that is to say, pawns move forward um, and attack diagonally. Um, rooks move... Uh, any, uh, anywhere within the four cardinal directions. Bishops move uh, anywhere along the diagonals, and knights uh, jump in the L space. Although this game does allow all pieces to jump other pieces that have more than one range. Right. Uh, which is, I think, different. Yeah. I'm that, not that, a chess that, expert. Yeah, that actually would be something different. Like, you can't bypass chess pieces in actual chess. You can bypass pieces here. Like, um, both your own and enemy pieces at that. And, yeah, the noted goal is you have to stop the pawns from, uh, you know, getting to the bottom uh, side of your, uh, side of the board. And the two main modes are Endless and Puzzle Attack. Um, there's some other ones, but uh, th those, are, like, those two modes are the meat of the game. Um, endless mode, like, like it says, is you keep going until you die, or maybe you get bored, uh, depending on the level of AI, like uh, playing on the uh, lowest level. Um, you know, it wasn't too long w before I was able to figure out how everything worked and, you know, just basically never died unless I made a mistake. Same. Um, yeah. Weirdly enough, that this mode has, an, uh, has auto saves and you can save your game, which kind of defeats the purpose in my estimation, 
you know, endless modes kind of work like this. Um, you keep going, it gets harder and harder until you ultimately succumb to the inevitable fate. That's you know. usually how they work, yes. This one, like I said, it's kind of uh, clashing here with the mechan mechanics. Like, endless mode doesn't get any harder as it goes along. Not unless you adjust the difficulty. Or lose pieces. Right. So, like I said, it, it gets predictable after a while. Now, it's like, and believe me, this, uh, like, believe me, this game can get hard. Like, mm -hmm. also in endless mode, uh, you can choose uh, any configuration you want. Like, yeah, you get a party of like four. Yes, you get four chess pieces, and if you want to have four rooks, you can have four rooks. If you can have, if you want to have four knights, you can have four knights. Once again, that's uh, another adjustable difficulty thing, and yeah, it. It's a nice idea on paper, but in principle, it actually kind of ends up clashing with what they're going for here. Like, I'd say everything was much better actualized and realized in the puzzle attack mode. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the puzzle attack mode is um, preset stuff. Um, it's, you know, there's a certain amount of uh, units. You got a certain configuration, like, you might have two rooks. You might have a knight and a bishop. Um, your task is... Uh, your basic task is obviously to destroy all the pawns. And, you know, in endless mode, you get uh, you get an amount of lives. Um, in puzzle attack mode, if you fail, you fail outright. You know, granted, they give you chances, but you can just, like, reset, so... Yeah, you know, that's a real factor. Um, anyway, um, now the basic challenge is obviously completing the level. The extra challenge is the amount of moves. There's there's two levels to this. There's part time and there's pro time. Um, it's a you know complete the level in as few moves as possible. You know, part time. Uh, uh, part time. That's a complete in seven moves. Pro time completed in six. Uh, and believe me, that is hard. You know, mm -hmm. I managed to get um, you know part time on a few levels. Not really trying, but you know, you can't be guaranteed. Yeah. And like I said, you know, and there's about 40, um, uh, about 40 of these. They're segmented off into uh, about nine puzzle chunks. I think you got to complete about six of them per um, row to move on. It's like, and uh, there are indeed more modes um there's knight's dungeon mode which is um 40 stages of dealing with um knights there's tour. a thing in chess called the knight's tour which in chess is it's a normal chess board and it's a technique where you use the knight's odd l-shaped move to visit every square on the board without repeating any. Right. Uh, this is that basic idea, except instead of being on a normal 8x8 chessboard, it's all different kinds of shapes of boards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like... There are no enemies in that mode. It's the, Your only em enemy is the limitation of the uh, knight's movement, although there are also... Uh, squares that give you the movement of a rook or a bishop for one turn. Right. So, there's a lot of content here. Now, 
and I'll, I'll say right now, I, I think the puzzle attack in the Knight's Dungeon are where it's at um, with this game. You know, uh, endless just kind of clashes with um, its own ideas a bit, but it's still playable. You know, and it's certainly one of the most unique games I've ever played. Yeah, you know, I. I mean, just by the virtue, uh, the fact that it's the only chess tower hero defense game I can think of. Well, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting implementation of the mechanics of chess. Yes, uh, I'll be honest. This is a game I would have rather have like played on a mobile device. No, but like a uh, you know my uh, my phone or like a 3ds or something like that because you know it just see if feels like it fits a mobile style of play better than uh, you know a desktop but that's just my own opinion mechanically and all that it's it's all sound and it all works like um let's see you know as far as uh, music, uh, let's see, the soundtrack is available, but... Which is weird. Yeah, you know, there's about four tracks in the game, like, and I think I only found, like, one of them, uh, memorable, but I'm like, the soundtrack is only, um, a dollar, so, and yeah, and getting to the price... The um, I will say right now the price is also right. Um, in the sense that it's four dollars. You know, this game is more than worth it at four dollars. Uh, you, know, you will get quite the amount of content, and even if it's not to your liking, it, it's cheap enough where. You know, it, it's not going to break any hearts. Uh, let's see. Uh, right, so... Any final thoughts on the game from, uh, from you guys? Um, honestly, I had a whole lot of trouble with this game because I know nothing about chess, so I'm basically just, you know, flailing about blindly. I suppose your enjoyment of the game is also predicated on how much you know of the game of chess. Yeah, I'm I, not actually... I, I'm vaguely mechanically competent at... Like, I know literally what the pieces of chess do, but I don't know how to play with strategy, really. And I think that would have benefited me... Like I said, I know how to play chess perfectly well. Like, my actual chess game, um, I've always been a bit too conservative for my own good, from what I've been told, but that's neither here nor there. Like, um, yeah, if you have a basic understanding of uh, how certain chess pieces move, um, you'll be fine. You don't even have to know um, advanced techniques like, say, castling. Like, Which I don't hunter. think you can even do. Yeah, because well, you no, don't you... have any permanent kings. Yeah, or pawn promotion. Yeah, um, if you if you play are... the if you if you know how, the reason why the, why playing chess better would help you with this game is because it helps you visualize all of the possibilities at once. I think. Right. And though, on, I, I suppose on the other hand, if you if you're going in expecting, you know. A regular game of chess you're probably going to be thrown off because you know you're dealing with at tops only four player types with a special inference of you know here's the queen here's the king but i'm like like the king power up downgrade um the only way that affects things is in movement like you 
it's a um, downgrade in the way the king moves. Like a, a king can move in one space in any direction, but you don't have to worry about check or checkmate. No. Right. And if you get the queen power up, that you know, that's predicated upon. Well, that's actually like real chess. And when you get a, you know, a pawn promotion, you usually go for the queen because she can move in any direction. You know. Anywhere on the board, basically. Now, so, you know, it's like base. You know, basically, what you need to know from the actual game of chess is how the pieces move. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond that, not, you know, it's like um, you don't have to worry about strategies. You don't have to worry about advanced moves, anything like that. It, it, Right. Um, so, any other final thoughts? Not that I can think of. All right. Um, so that'll about do it for this week. Um, yeah. Was, oh, we, um, we've got kind of a full week ahead. Um, next week on the reviews. Um, first up, we've got Thimbleweed Park, um, a new adventure game from Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick. If you recall, we had them on our broadcast um, a few years ago now, if mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Like, it's been a while. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I tried to get them back on for, you know, the release of the game, but um, apparently their schedule was a little too busy. But, yeah. Um, Thimbleweed Park is a... It's a adventure game in the style of old uh, LucasArts games. Um, really specifically aiming for Maniac Mansion here. Like, yeah, I really it can't... looks it looks like Maniac Mansion. Uh, like, I'll be honest, I can't, I really can't say too much about this because um, I think the embargo is still going on. Like, I think the embargo lasts until May uh, March thirtieth. So. Um, and uh, I've only put in a few hours um, into it today because, well, you know, that's kind of how my review schedule goes. It's like, if I start a game, it'll usually be on, at the earliest, the Saturday um, before the, you know, the week before. Because, well, I've got other games to review. Uh, speaking of that, our second review is slated to be um, Frozen Bites has been heroes um a bit of a caveat here we still haven't gotten the codes for this we're on the list um we should be getting said codes tomorrow um latest tuesday but since we don't have the codes yet it's not guaranteed so if that ends up getting scrapped uh you'll know why now, um, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, um, coming up in interviews on the main show, we'll be having Alex Meyer of Shy Snake Games. Um, they're developing a uh, tactical squad RPG called Spy DNA. Um, uh, it's currently on Steam Greenlight, I believe. Um, it's, it's a curious thing, uh, definitely. Um, more on that on Wednesday. And on a special Thursday interview, I, I know this is the second one we've had this month, but I can yes, assure I would you... I very much like if we could never do that again, please. I'm like, I can't make any promises, literally, because both times... It's had to move to Thursdays because, um, due to some personal stuff. Mm -hmm. Last time around, it was due to the guests. This time around, it's due to me. I got to take my mother in to get a mammogram, okay? Can't get out of that. Mm -hmm. So, it's happening on Thursday. Now, anyway, so, um, on Thursday, we'll be having Kai of Frozen Bites of, you know, you know, has been heroes and the trine series um you 
you know, yeah, we are interviewing them for the release of their game, Has Been Heroes. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, in regards to MSP, I believe we are having an episode this week. No guest has been lined up, as far as I know. So, um, it's going to be, uh, you know, basically a usual episode of MSP. So, that is the week ahead for um, Fragments of Silicon. And we hope you'll be there, you know, either live or, you know, through the archives. And until Wednesday, I wish you good gaming. <laughs>